Welcome to the Interview Podcast, the voice of InterCT. InterCT's aim is to help young athletes become excellent individuals through the vehicle of soccer. Love the game, love to learn, and love to compete at InterCT. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Interview Podcast. We have Tom Robinson. I am Aaron Mazzola, and we have a very special guest. Uh, she is new to the team. We have Hannah, Hannah Lasky. Hi, guys. How are you doing today, Hannah? I'm good. How are you? Good. So we figured we uh, we introduce our, our newest member of the team. Uh, Hannah is the administrative assistant, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, she deals a lot with the website. She always answering emails, I just heard. Yep. Um, and I'll let her introduce herself a little bit more, but can you tell us about yourself, Hannah? Um, so I'm Hannah. I just graduated from Springfield College this past May. I got my degree in sport management. So it's kind of led me here. I did my internship at Sport Performance U this past semester. I was here from January to May. So that's kind of how I got my foot in the door here and then ended up with you guys here at Inter. Yeah. So I'm pretty much working for both of you, both Sport Performance U and Inter, kind of doing the same thing, marketing and administrative work for both of you guys. It works out that we're in the same place. Yeah, too, no, it's so. great. I just go over, knock on Leon's door. And, how do you do this? And then I go to Alex. How do I do this part? And there you go. it works great. That's it. So did you play any sports? I not? did. So I played soccer, swimming, and softball. Okay. I played, I played everything through high school. I decided not to play sports when I got to college. I was kind of like over it. Yeah, I get to a point where he's like, you just do so much, especially yeah. in high school, and then you're playing travel teams and such. That I was kind of like burnt out. Yeah, yeah, and just wanted to continue sports. I just didn't want to play anymore, so that's how I ended up in sport management as well. Okay. Yeah. And sports in college is basically a job. As Pretty well. much. I don't know how people do it. Like the D three level, that was what my school was, and yeah. I, I don't know how people did it. It's I a lot. Lift before school even starts at like five in the morning, and then they got practice afterwards or a game, and they're traveling, and I'm like. I can only imagine what D one's like because yeah, holy cow, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Two training sessions a day, and then it's you're, a lot. You're missing class. Go to yeah, go to games and and trips. But uh, so you're where are you from? I'm from Roxbury, so I live in Litchfield County. Okay, so, so that's a little a little trip for you. That's 50 minutes here every okay. day. Yeah, kind of far. Not really though. But good. And so the the inter families that are listening. Um, Hannah, how can you help or what have you done so far to help and, you know? Yeah, so pretty much Leon's kind of passed over to me any communication that I can answer if it's not a specific question for Leon coaches specific, like where registration links are or a little bit about like certain programs, like our winter programs that are open right now. I can answer questions like that. Um, if you need me to get you in contact with one of our coaches, that's something I can do as well. Pretty much any generalized questions like, I'm your girl for those. Well, you, I mean, once you get more established, you'll yeah. be able to yeah. figure figure some more stuff out. But yeah, I, I appreciate you having or coming in. And glad to have you on. Yeah, thank you. If you want to stay, you can stay for the rest of it or, or you can leave. It's up to you. But I, I was going to say it's quite uh, exciting to have someone with a sports background management um, for yeah. someone who couldn't for someone who couldn't get into college. When, when I left school at 16, it's uh, it's good to know we're in safe hands if I can't wing it. Um, and make it work on my end so I think we're, we're in a good place and we've got good options and you'll soon figure out that Leon is always in that office no matter yes. what time you knock on that door yep. so <laughs> that's the truth but anyway to uh to start this podcast um our first topic that we have to discuss is the new tournaments right Tom I mean a couple teams for the Poughkeepsie tournament got there their tournaments um, canceled, unfortunately. And we were looking for a bunch of different options to reschedule some tournaments and get the, those teams in. Um, and I believe that we found a tournament that accepted all of our teams, basically, right? Yeah, I wouldn't say it was our first choice if I was doing this conversation in August on, on how where we would want our guys to go. But the issue we have is once we kind of get into the winter, we're, we're fully kind of going with high school, with ECRL, with USL events. So the winter doesn't really help us. And then the spring, we already have our Jamboree in Milford for our younger groups, part of the NCT Cup. And then we also do the Needham tournament towards the end. So 
uh, we was running out of time to to find somewhere. And after speaking with um, Stephen Bell, the the DLC uh, union, he he pointed out to us that um, there was a tournament in in New York, kind of just over the what's he called now? I always call it the Tappan Zee Bridge. Uh, it's the Governor Cuomo Bridge. See, and you get to hear Aaron's um, fluent pronunciation. So, yeah, so it's not too far away. It's technically closer than Poughkeepsie. Um, on the boys' side, we've got those six teams that got rained out um, in the afternoon at, at Poughkeepsie. So what's that? It's Amade's 14 SLEDP. Aaron, your team's going right, 13 RL. And 10 uh, EDP. 10 EDP. And then we have Sean's 2012 SL and Anthony's 2011 RL. So they're the six boys on... On our side, Gene's got some girls' teams going. Um, most of those ones that missed out and don't have a plan of another tournament. And I think most of the union teams are going to be there as well. So I think from talking to the tournament, I think we're around 20 teams. So it just shows you how many were cancelled because I think we said 36, right, went to Poughkeepsie. Yeah. So, um, you know, more teams didn't play than, than did play. So, yeah, we're going to – I actually have the website up here – North Rockland Soccer Association is is where we're going to the Harvest Fest um, tournament. Reason we like this kind of style for, for it is it allows, it's just girls Saturday, boys Sunday. And I've already spoke to the tournament and they're pretty confident they can help us with staffing. A um, few reasons for that. Myself, I, I'm back in England. I'm, I'm taking the, the, the trip over there for the first time in six years. So I'm not around. Uh, that weekend, Coach Sean is, is back in the UK trying to get himself a visa to get him here for 18 months um, to help us throughout the rest of the winter into, obviously, 24-25 season. And then Coach Anthony is at the Juventus tournament with the ECRL group. So we're a little bit stretched on coaches, but we'll have our... We'll have our new, which we need to touch on later on. We forgot that. That might be humbling from you, that right, Aaron? Yeah, we could, that could have been the whole podcast. Um, yeah. We'll have our new head of youth development, um, Coach Aaron, at the tournament. And uh, Coach Leon will be there, along with um, Amade and Colin. is going to be filling in for Anthony and Sean there. So we'll have we'll have more than enough coaches. Uh, and also we'll have our friends from the union branch, Pedro, Joel, uh, Stephen and those guys able to um, ah, it's like perfect timing. Look, another person who's just got a promotion showed up in the office. <sighs> Feels like yeah, a little clear. swerve here, Aaron. Oh, no. But um, yeah, so yeah, we, we have plans for for the makeup from the Poughkeepsie rain out. It, it should be being co uh, communicated via um, your coaches, and then Gene's going to sort out the girls. And I think Coach Stephen's already got most of the union stuff already online. Yeah. And if nobody has uh, been to that area before, um, Rockland County is home to one of the greatest malls in this area, the Palisades Mall. Have you been to the Palisades, Tom? Well, you guys all know I used to live in like the Hudson That's Valley. Right. Yeah, that was like the only mall worth driving to. So massive, yeah. right? If I, if I was being picky, I'd stop at Woodbury before I got there because Woodbury's miles better. Uh, Woodbury is a different thing, though. Woodbury is the outlets, the mall. It has go karts now. It's got axe throwing. It's got this climbing thing in the top, bowling. I've out. not been there since that happened. I've not been to Palisades Mall since probably 2015 when I moved to Connecticut. Hannah, you ever been to Palisades? Yeah, but I was little. So little. Can't remember it's much. crazy. It's massive in there now. If you have time, a strange side note to that. As a growing up in England, I did like my American R and B and hip hop, and I remember the first time I was driving up that road, and it was and the Ja Rule song just driving outside of Palisades. I was that's like, it. I don't know if it's the same Palisades. I don't know if there's another Palisades somewhere I'm else in the either. US, but that, that's 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 the uh, the equivalent of um, how my brain works there. With, <laughs> it just goes off in different different areas every once in a while. I was like, oh, I know where this is. So, <laughs> me, me, and my best friend Ja Rule. So. Best friend, Ja Rule. Yeah, did like a lot of Ja Rule in the uh, late 2000s. Or was it early 2000s? I don't know. But it was say Can't 2000s. hate, though. Can't hate. Um, so, yeah, that's a, it's, it's a good tournament. Um, I've, I've played against some of those teams over in Rockland, and the competition should be fairly good. Um, but it's good that we got another, um, another tournament for us to, I guess, you know, 
you know, get the get these teams in um, to play who didn't play in Poughkeepsie. Um, now we can transition into our Shelton High School tryouts because we talk mainly on this podcast. We talk mainly about the pre high school teams, um, but we do have a whole nother side of this club that is high school. Um, so you know, Shelton, Norwalk. I'm not too sure about Litchfield, but most of our programs have uh, high school tryouts coming up, right, Tom? Yeah, so everyone has something being offered. So some might not be promoted as much as, as other ones. For example, like Litchfield, that's kind of just moving kids from that they already have in their travel program, trying to move them into the, the premier environment so they kind of don't advertise it as much as, as we do because they kind of just use – that as a, as a stepping stone. Right. Um, we discussed it before, right? Like the boys side, we're not really pushing it too much because we don't really have any open spots. I think across all of our teams, we might have three spots available to fill. Um, and, and to fill those spots, we are looking for kids at the higher end of the roster where we're not just going to, you know, fill our rosters um, without trying to make them better. Uh, and it also could mean like, I know, previous times throughout the year players can get bumped up you know if someone's doing really sec really well on the second team we can get them on the top team then we have a space open on on the second team and and, and it can work that way so we have that uh the girls that they're looking for for more players um in the norwalk and the union branch and then the high school saying colin colin needs some players on the high school groups and then the the high school girl sides uh, we're trying to use um how some of our coaches are doing high school girls stuff. You know, Ashley's doing stuff at Shelton High School. So that's going to allow us to try and uh, get players in from that area. Coach Steve's doing stuff in a high school platform. Coach Pedro's doing stuff on the, on a platform there in the high school. So hopefully that can help grow the, you know, the union side um, for the high school stuff. Cause you know, Norwalk, we, we technically had our high school tryouts back in May. So we know it's still it's still only a supplemental tryout. So we're not trying to fill new teams. We're just trying to fill up open roster spots before those guys and girls get started. And Tom, when are those pre high school uh, supplemental tryouts again? They they all they all vary a little bit, but the the easiest way to blanket it is kind of the week starting November thirteenth is is the easiest way. So that's when the boys are running those uh, in Norwalk. I think the girls are the next day in Norwalk. And the high school guys kind of come in after after us so you know, there's a there's a lot going on 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 that week i don't want to give specific dates because they still can move right uh, and change but typically that week and, and another reason why we have to do that is the high school kids can't kick a soccer ball for us if the team's still playing in a championship format otherwise that voids the um that that could kind of make them forfeit the the high school season so we don't want anybody coming to do a tryout to to do uh, an inter ct team and then all of a sudden uh, somebody finds out that there was at a tryout, and then they have to pull out of a, a you know a state championship in a, at a high school level. So that's why we do it a little bit later. It allows players to attend, but also doesn't um, affect high school kids trying to get club team soccer. But also doesn't affect what they're currently doing. So um, that's kind of where we are with all those, and a pretty exciting time because we get to see lots of new faces, but also welcome back some of the some of the high school kids because I enjoy that on my behalf. I um, with being here for eight years, I've coached a lot of those high school kids. So it's also good to see them. Uh, and there's nothing more crazy than when you see like the old nines at the Needham tournament and you're like, Oh, these are still kids. And then you see them the, the, the end of the first high school season. He's like, Oh, wow. These are, these are turning into to young men, uh, full adults. So it's a, it is, it's a fun little transition to see. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We were just joined by the oath and himself. Hello everybody. We have a full room in here for the podcast. Okay. It's yeah. Hannah's presence. That's that's what it is bringing people in. Uh, yeah, appreciate that information, and Tom, and uh, you know, possibly look out for an email from Hannah regarding some of the information that we've spoke we've spoken about now. Um, anything else, Tom, with the with tryouts or before we move on to the the election day camp? Only one thing, and because we usually get this email, um, is. Kids who are currently on the team don't need to attend tryouts, right? We, we're not going to base our teams on or our judgment on players on what they could do in an hour tryout. We're, we're evaluating players every single day, every single game, every single practice. So 
Uh, I, I do get that question a lot. Does my son need to attend tryouts? No. If we think you're you're good enough to be moved up, or we potentially need to move someone back back down to a to a state level team, then further conversations we'll have separately. Um, you know, we're not going to make our mind up based off a, off off just what they do in a tryout. You know, we're right. going to base it off what coaches say with feedback, what we see on the VO cameras, that type of thing. So you might get one or two players asked to attend. Uh, we, we do that to compare new players to, but that they're not being asked to attend to try out. They're, they're just, uh, we usually bring one of our regional players, one of our SL players, one of our EDP players, and then it just gives us a good little um, kind of a, a way to gauge where these new Frame kids are at. Yeah. Yeah, and anybody can show up in a tryout and look phenomenal. Um, based on what, what what little time we have to watch them, but then we got to make better decisions, and then that's where we have these guys in. So yeah, some people will be asked to attend tryouts, but they won't be trying out. They'll be just helping us uh, as a way to evaluate new players, and then you know you don't need to attend a tryout to make a new team. Uh, that's been done every single practice, every single game. Yeah, no, I think you you touched on it well there. Um, as a coach tryouts are difficult because we only have a certain amount of time to evaluate new players coming in, but it's, it's good to know, Tom, that, you know, the players that are in are still in we're not, you know, we're, we're not going to push anybody out. It's really just, if you are invited to come to the, the supplemental triad, it's more of a frame of reference so that we can gauge the new players against the existing players that we do have so that we can put them in the correct position to achieve that good level of success as well as failure so that everybody is growing. I'm going to jump in. You're putting yourselves down, both of you. Let's face it, right? You're experts in the field. I wouldn't You've been say doing that at all. Well, not yourself, Aaron, but Tom. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, you, we've been doing this long enough, right? And before we go into a tryout, we know what we're looking for. We're yeah. looking for a left back or we're looking for a goal scoring forward. Um you know, and we've got that in our head already. So, you know, with the expertise, we've, we've seen thousands and thousands of kids. We know what a good kid looks like, um, a, a kid that's uh, effective. So, you know, although, you know, let's face it, you do, you can tell a player in the first six minutes. Mm. So, you know, although it is only an hour, you, um, you know, we're looking at little nuances, et cetera. So coupled with the fact that we know what we're looking for and the experience we got, you know, 20 minutes is good enough, but we're giving them an hour's to to try out. And and if we if we're still not sure, they get invited back to something else, don't they, Tom? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's why I was just actually me and Leon are more often. He ties things together very well. Yeah, um, I'm the glue. Just <laughs> you're the glue guy. Um yeah, just to touch on there what Leon was 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 getting at. We we are gonna ask people to try out also to be part of some of our winter programs. So if you want to be a winter premier player you do have to attend tryouts. And, and the whole idea for that is so one, we can put you on the right team and also to make sure it's something that you guys want to be available for. It's our winter, we have everything, right? We, we have stuff from the, the little guys all the way to our, our fully rostered players. Uh, winter Premier in previous years has been very successful for us as it's a, it's a nice entryway into the club. Right, you come and practice with us January, February, a little bit into March. You get a feel for what it's like, and then that will allow you to realize: is hey, do I want to try out for this club? Come, um, you know, tryouts in the spring. Is this something that I want to do with my time? Maybe step away from my travel program, come and join into maybe step away from another sport, come and join into that way. And and the winter premier program offers a lot for that, but also, um something that coach Leon runs very, very well, the, the pre-team stuff, you know, with a lot of players, me and Leon was discussing last night, the amount of kids that hurt started with Leon at the pre-team kind of in this little quiet window of winter time. And then now we're doing really, really well um, on their actual rosters. You know, we was not to name drop players, but like me and Leon was discussing at least five or six that are now like really, really important to the play, to the teams that they're on now were, yeah. if we didn't have the pre-team platform, they, they would never have, um, they, they would never have had that opportunity to one learn and be part of the inter family, but also then move up a level as well. So yeah, with our, our tryouts, we, we won't have spots for everybody, but we will be able to offer winter premier training to a few teams. And that's how we've grown the 2013 program, right? You had a lot of 2013 winter premier players. That's how we grew the 2014 program. I'm hoping to do something similar this year with the, with the 2015s as well. 
Yeah, I had, I remember now the winter last year, I had a, a fair amount of, of, of players coming in to find out if this program was right for them. And I have, you know, a couple on, I guess, one or two on each team now. So it, it's, it's a great way for families to figure out if it's a, if it's a good move, it's a great way uh, for players to figure out if they can compete at certain levels. And, you know, it's just, it's good to add in players that we don't see every day, you know, so get, in, get a nice little change in, in, in face, change in maybe intensity or change in, in skill level. Um, so if you're definitely, if you're interested, definitely send some emails, you know, who can they contact Tom? Can they contact you about these? Hannah? <laughs> like anybody yeah you, 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 it's we, funny we, right no. we're doing a podcast and tom's pointing <laughs> <laughs> he's made, he especially, quiet. He's especially just... we don't, we don't the video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody in that frame picture that i can see over there? no i you can reach out to anybody right M most people feel comfortable re reaching out to me to leon we, we've been here long enough we are we are trying to help um me and leon can only get back to so many emails a day text messages phone calls that's why we, we we've got Hannah in to help us on that. That's why we we've made the steps with Anthony and, and and Aaron taking up new roles in the club as well. So whoever you reach out to, will get you the right information. But yeah, if you have any questions, I usually am a good source because I'm the one putting these programs together. But yeah, you know your coaches know Hannah knows, obviously Leon knows, uh, Gene on the girls side, Stephen on on the union side. So you know we got we got plenty of good staff who know what we're promoting and what we're trying to get kids into. Yeah. Trying to try outs. Have you spoke to Hannah yet? And everything you've done the whole intro with yeah. Hannah. Yep. Good. Did you play for Litchfield? No, so I didn't. Um, I was a freshman in high school, and I had I think his name is Dave. Oh, <laughs> full he, circle. I had, yes. I had a bunch of girls that I was friends with. They played for the Litchfield team, and he asked me to play, and I was like, no, because I play softball mm -hmm. travels. So it was a lot, but almost. Wow, <laughs> it just wow. shows you, right, Coach, Coach Dave Shannon. The uh, inspiration for for many, like always recruiting. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> to, didn't succeed with Hannah. Though. <laughs> Step it up, Dave. We lost it to a couple different sports. <laughs> now um, we can talk about the election day camp that we have coming up, and I think it's it's a good way to use a free day, you know, or or a, some free time that you know uh, kids may not be in school. Um, something to get more touches on the ball. Um, and where where is this and when will this election day camp be held, Tom? So the election day camp will run on election day. Hey. <laughs> that would be, that that would be the coming. answer. I think it's the seventh. For somebody who can't vote in the US or in England, election days aren't high on my calendar, mm -hmm. but uh, we're not citizens, we're residents. Oh, can't, no, you can't, can't vote. vote. Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I am right now. If I get my citizenship, I'm going off topic. I think I have to give up my citizenship in the UK. Really? That's the new... Yeah, Anthony's going, oh, really? No, I, I, it, I think it's a new thing. Make it permanent. It's a new make thing. it permanent, Tom and Leo. Yeah. Now, yeah. now if, yeah, if we, if, if we have a kid and I'm UK and they're US, and I'm hoping someone says, but, you know, Kirsten, my wife, US and I'm UK, we have a kid that's dual citizen, but if I get citizenship here, I have to give up my passport and citizenship in the UK. Really? I only found that out in April. Yeah, because wow. someone someone just did it. But I, I, I'm totally off topic. But yeah, no, that, that that's yeah, that that's why we're we're running an election day camp on election day, which I think is the seventh um, of November. Um, as of right now, we we might tweak it a little bit. The 7v7 and 9v9 boys is fully sold out. Um, and we only have two spots left on the 11v11 boys. Uh, the girls are a little bit behind. That's mainly on me. Uh, I only got the information to Coach Gene yesterday, so being Tuesday. So we're, we're hoping we can get some girls um, on that one. If we can't and the girls are, are busy, then we're going to get – we'll open it up to more boys because I already have a few uh, families in my inbox asking me, can we get on this camp? Um, main reason – why the numbers are so low is for us, we, we can throw in a, a camp, but not really coach the kids. We can, you know, we can bring a hundred kids to the field and just have them run around. And we actually want the kids to get better during this camp. So, you know, we, we've gone with that elite group training and we've been trying to keep it at eight players maximum. So it'd be eight, 
eight seven v seven boys working with one coach, eight seven v seven girls working with one coach. If we don't get the girls, then we might turn that into a co-ed group, but uh, originally based off feedback from families in the club and coaches in the club, they wanted to see if we get girls only groups. Um, and if we can't, then we'll, we'll open that up because obviously we know we have a lot more um, players on the boys' side that can take advantage of that because obviously eight players isn't isn't that met that uh, that many. But the main reason again for that it was just quality of coaching. You know, we we could have a, we, I could have Iron coach thirty kids and they're not really going to get better because there's only him to them thirty kids. But with with Aaron and only eight players, you can obviously be a lot more specific with the feedback. You can kind of fix any bad habits. So. Yeah, that, that's going to happen there. It's a three-hour camp, uh, 9 till 12 on our lovely new turf field down at All Saints. And um, yeah, just a Tuesday, come down and play. We still have our normal practice in the evening, but it's just a, a way for some of those families that don't have school that day or mum and dad need a little bit of well-deserved break, get the kids out to this camp and know that they're going to get better. It's not we're just not throwing on a camp. I, I see loads of advertisements all over social media of, you know, hey, come and do this camp. But it's, you know, you can tell by the way it's planned that it's not going to be focused on making kids better. It's just going to be the type of camp that I don't like running, which we refer to coaching wise as babysitting. I, I, I'm happy to go and coach. I'm happy to coach as many kids as possible, but ultimate goal for us as coaches is we want to make them better. And in this environment, we can do so. That's where we are. Uh, we are with that one, mate. That's uh, election day camp. I think it's $70 um, for, for nine till 12. And um, yeah, spots are going fast. And it's we're still in season now, too. So, you know, the 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 amount of time that we have the touches on the ball as a team uh, is coming to an end now. It is limited. So the time that we do have, we want it to make it as quality as we possibly can. So that's one of the other reasons why we wanted to keep it small as well. So um, we can move on to our weekly discussion now. If because, no uh, we're, we're going to take advantage of the situation we currently have because it's very rare we have you and Quinny in there together. Should yeah. we just discuss our new roles for? Nah, for I don't want to be. I don't want to be put on. Um, yeah. So for those guys spotlight. that have not seen, have not seen our um, update, we 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 put it out there. I emailed everybody. Um, we went on social media. Actually, one of our most read news stories as well. I was checking it the other day. It's had over three hundred people read the story. So um, for those guys that have, have been living on the moon and not seen the news, you know, we have promoted Aaron into the, the head of youth development. It's a role that I used to run uh, when I first started here a few years ago and really beneficial to have somebody help bridge the gap between Leon and the club, but also watching players move through the field formats. You know, going from 7v7 to 9v9 doesn't seem very difficult, but it's like playing soccer all over again. So Aaron's got that role. He's going to be managing the, I guess it'll be U8 to U11. So if you're in those age groups, your your, your main contact there will be Aaron. And then he, he's talking daily with me, uh, making sure we're on top of things. And then also on the, the boy side, Anthony's going to do the other age groups, which would be U12. Uh, main reason we wanted him to get involved with those is so that that team can hit the ground running when they are part of Anthony's uh, current structure in the 11 v 11 format. So this year he's going to start trying to be a little bit more hands-on with the 2012 so that when he gets to see them and coach them in August, he's going to already know who they are and we've not got to spend, you know, four or five weeks of just getting to know each other. And then he's going to carry on his role with the 13s and 14s and then oversee the transition from um, U14 to U15 in high school and kind of assist Colin in that one there so he knows all the kids that are being pushed through into the high school. And, and for me, I, I'm happy for both of you. I, I think you deserve this role. I think you both are going to be great at it. And I'm just happy to have some help. So um, yeah. I do want to wish you guys all the best. And I hope you're not getting annoyed with the amount of text messages I send you on a day-to-day -day now. So uh, I may may or not have, may or may not have added a mute uh, feature on, on one of them. <laughs> After a certain time, you'll realize I do a lot in weird hours because... Basically, when my son's asleep is when I do the most. So, yeah, no, I appreciate that, Tom. And, you know, I'll let Quinny speak for himself. But, you know, it's it's uh, it feels good to be, you know, looked at in you know, a, a, a new light now. Uh, something with a little bit more responsibility is a good thing, I think, for me. But I'm also, you know, happy to be involved with all the other directors at this club and learn from from everybody here. You know, uh, I know you do a lot, Tom. 
you do a lot on the managerial side, you do a lot on, on the field. So if I can alleviate your workload in any way, I'm happy to do that and also learn from learn from you. I also want to add in there that I think it's beneficial that we don't just cap it for me at U11. I think the 9v9 age group, I think it's best if Quinny and I kind of dip our toes in each one of those U11, U12 um, age groups so that we can kind of facilitate that, that movement um in the smoothest way possible um so i'm 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 excited and i'm and I'm, you know thank you for the uh the limelight here even though i don't really like limelight too much um but yeah i appreciate it leon appreciate it tom quinn is there anything that you wanted to to say um not really just yeah uh, happy to to take up a new position i feel like it's something that a lot of the things I've probably already been doing, to, to be fair, um, just a few more additional tasks during the week. Some things that I already enjoy doing. You know, I've always liked the coaching aspect of the job, um, working on curriculum, session planning, which I can do a little bit more now in this role. So that's probably the thing that I'm looking forward to the most, um, getting my sort of hands around the 99 age group as well as just the 11 v 11 when they come to me. Um, the admin stuff is, you know, it's an additional thing we have to do, I suppose. But the coaching stuff is what I really enjoy doing. Yeah. And we are, Quinny and I are working on a curriculum for the 77, 9v9 and 11v11 so that it can be a little bit more cohesive. Um, and we fi figure out and find out what our preferred style of play is so that we can continue it throughout all the age groups and hopefully make it a club wide um location wide kind of thing yeah that, that's key that's that's the stuff that like we talk about me and leon don't have time to get to that so yeah. if you guys can run with that and we can filter it down from how we want the usl academy team to play and we filter it all the way down and we have position specific roles in and out of possession yeah i, I couldn't imagine anything worse than trying to do that right now so you guys taking care of that would be Phenomenal. And like you said, having that club identity, that club, you know, methodology, philosophy, and really then getting into the coaches would, would is going to be great. And I think we're only going to only going to benefit from it. So, yeah, no, exciting times. Yes, it is for all of us. So now we can move on unless there's something else that you wanted to add. Tom. Uh, no, 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 no. I knew that was coming. Um, so we oh, have so. a couple of things for our weekly discussion here. Um, and we have somebody here, Hannah, who's played several different sports, so we can get her opinion on that. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to talk about today, and we've, we've heard it from several other, several other coaches at the club here. Um, I think, you know, as a coach, being coachable as a player is one of, if not the most important things that you can do when you come to training as well as games because as a coach we see so much we see so many kids and we give out so much information but the players that they they understand or may not understand right away but ask the right questions they're always attentive they're willing to learn they're willing to compete and they you know we we want our players to be coachable. And at the end of the day, we want everybody to learn. So I think coachability from a coach's perspective is something that every player needs and every player should strive for in being coachable so that you can progress in the way that is going to help you and help the team. So Hannah, in all of your, you know, experiences playing different sports, you said soccer, swimming and softball. Yep being coachable as an athlete, has that helped you in any way? Yeah, absolutely. Ultimately, I feel like to be a coachable athlete, it, it comes down to if you really want to play or not. So if you're oh, willing to learn, then you're going to be coachable. True. You're going to have that relationship with your coach. You're going to be making strides towards being better. And it goes on even after sports. Like if you were coachable then, then you're willing to learn still after school and everything. Like having those proper conversations and knowing what to ask or knowing what to do or not to do mm -hmm. really helps 
shape you into really who you are at the end of the day. I mean, it's deep. Yeah. I, I, it really, it really, I think gets down to that. If you want to be there or if your parents are making you play, then there's, you can tell, you can really yeah, tell definitely. who wants to be there and who isn't, then that's going to be your deciding factor on who's going to make it farther. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. Leon, let me ask you a question. What does it mean to be coachable as a player? I was going to just say, do, do people know what that yeah. is? And and we can spitball some words out now, but I, I think attentive is probably one of them. Um, the, like Hannah said, they want to be there. But for me, the biggest thing is our players trying to put into practice the things that the coach is trying, even if they're not great at it. Mm -hmm. Or may not have that success right away. And, and then we live in a world where everyone wants immediate success. Mm. Um, but I really love when players try to put into practice. So, you know, I had an example yesterday with, with the under eight, under nine girls is we were just doing moves to be in a play, beat a player a lot of them were getting success normally just by doing their inside of the foot and just go the way that they with that uh, quick acceleration yeah. being able to be and of course I'm doing the thing that Tom did with pointing I'm kind of doing demonstrations <laughs> here but um yeah using the inside of the foot and they were getting success the bigger stronger faster girls mm -hmm. but the the technique we want is to use the outside of the foot to to take away because it's away from pressure yeah and I was I spoke to the, the girls and said, look, it's you've got to be able to try this because there will come a stage where you're not the biggest, strongest, fastest player to be the player and you need the better technique. Yeah. So I was very pleased with, you know, out of the 15 of them I had that, you know, three of them were were trying it. You know, I found that three of them could do it anyway. Three of them were kind of trying to get it right. And the others were just, oh, I get success this way, so I'm going to keep on doing it. Right. Um, and, and, you know, maybe tried it the other way. I think that ties in, Leon, to, to some of the other podcast discussions that we had in the sense that we're, as coaches, we're trying to prepare our players for not the game on the weekend, but game six years in the future, 10 years in the future, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So if they continue to disregard what you're saying, because they're getting certain successes at the moment right now, then five years later or even next season, they'll do a scissor and take it with the inside of the foot and it won't work mm. because the technique is wrong. Little stuff like that. You know, it's, and it's, it's not just moves. It's not just using space correctly. It's listening to the reasons behind these certain things that, that we have. You know, there's a reason for everything. Like I've said, I say it all the time. There's reasons for everything. So I'm not just telling you to do something just to do it because I want to see it like that. You know, if you continue to take the do a scissor and take the ball with the inside of your foot, the defender is going to catch on. Oh, she does a scissor and she's going to take it with the inside of her foot to the left side. You know, there's different ways to be the defender. So we're trying to instill some of these values and some of the, some of the work ethic is a, is a big thing as well, I think. So Tom, what is it, what does it mean to you to be coachable? Because you've had, you've had so many different age groups at this club, like Leon, you know, and now you're 2010. Um, I guess, you know, the, the top team is, is not a direct result of, of your coaching, but it, it plays a, a massive part and they're doing so well, right? I know you, you made it. Well, I was going to say, we can give Quinny maybe 10% credit. Hey, so, I yeah, would have... no, 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 no. Joke, jokes aside, no, Anthony's done a great job with those. I, I, I'll hold my hand up. Quinny's much better at coaching 11 v 11 than I am. Um, but um, for me, it's, it's a lot of things, right? I, I don't want to go over what you guys have already talked about, but one of the things that I'm learning with, with my new teams, because they do come from Leon's pre-team environment or the UA environment, because I'm doing the U9s now, it's, it's a little bit different structure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, it's, it's a little, Obviously, I'm getting them ready to compete in the Zone 1 Academy. You know what I mean? Where in previous times, you might be going playing against travel and rec teams. So for me, it's asking questions. You know, I, I, I talk to my group a lot and I go, any questions? And nobody says anything. And sometimes we're too scared 
or nervous or they don't want to be that person who's asking a silly question. But then ultimately, that might be another question that some other kid in the group wants to be asked and then nobody asks it. I think everyone knows exactly what we want to do. And then I sit back and start watching the session and, I know, and I'm like, no one's got any idea what's going on here. So don't be afraid to ask questions. And then two, if you know your child has a, has a certain way of taking on information, share that with us. So we're not spending six months trying to figure out how they learn. Because we have so many, I, I have 12 kids on my roster, but you know, Aaron, your EDP, there's 20 kids, you know, by the time you figure out what all 20 of your kids learn, like they're in high school, you're not coaching them again. So like, if you are seeing that, like your kid is struggling with the way we're putting the information on, maybe he needs us to get a tactics board. Maybe it needs to be in a one-on-one -on -one environment. Maybe it needs to be more question-based. Hey, what do you do in this? What happens here? Uh, and then that's only going to help us as well, get to know your kid better, but also get on that same path where we want them to be better. So for me, my main one is just be open to seeking better understanding. You know what I mean? If, if you don't fully know all the answers or why have I hit four shots over the crossbar? All right, your standing foot's in the right position. Is it your hips? Is it your shoulders? Is it the, the way you're approaching the ball? There are reasons to this, you know what I mean? And then try and fix it that way. So so I, I like that one. And then I think Leon touched on it as well. Like make mistakes. Listen, mistakes at a young age are the best thing that we can do because that allows us to see what you're thinking. If you don't make a decision and you one of the coaches on the sideline or the parents shout, shoot, then you've just kicked it. You've, you've not made that decision. That decision has been made for you. So then we can't help you. Where if you don't shoot, then at least I can say, hey, why are we not taking the shot here? What were you thinking? What did you see? Oh, I was off balance. I, I didn't think the shot was on. It wasn't the perfect opportunity. And then there's different routes and avenues for us to kind of discuss and help there. So, you know, for me as a coach and the way I word it to my 2015s is I want you to make mistakes. But each time you make a mistake, I want it to be different than the first time. So if you make a bad pass your first time, okay, why are you using the wrong part of your foot? Okay, so next time you use the inside. No, you make a bad pass again, but you've used the inside of the foot, but the weight's wrong. Or you've not passed to the other person's back foot. And right. then we're starting working towards what's the, the actual issue instead of me just standing there saying, pass it, and then we don't really know what the yeah. issue is. So I'm going to interject. There's two things I took from that. There's number one, there's no such thing as unlucky. And this is what I tell the youth coach program. There's always a reason why you didn't succeed, whether it's scoring a goal or, or you did a misplaced pass or something like that. So that's up to us to identify that and the players to identify it. Definitely. And that rolls in with the second thing, which I, I you know, Quinny, you're intelligent. You might be able to help me with this. Is it Einstein's quote about the... <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, the, the definition know, of yeah. insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results so back to you know doing the scissors with the inside of the foot if you're you know if you're doing something constantly and not getting success ask the question what am i doing wrong um because if you're constantly doing it wrong then you know there has to be a reason quinny hand up yeah, I would just like to add while well, it's in my head because otherwise I'll forget it. Um, talking about being coachable, pay attention when your coach is delivering coaching points. It may not be like at the time, they may not be speaking directly to you, but it does not mean it is not relevant for you. We've had a lot of discussion in the past week or so with feedback. Oh, you've not given my kid feedback or do you have any feedback or something along them lines and sometimes it can be quite frustrating because i feel like they're getting some form of feedback every single session multiple times during the session just because the coach hasn't gone okay johnny come here i'm now about to give you some feedback so pay attention doesn't mean that there aren't lots of snippets of information layered through a session that if players are really focused and listening, they can use that information for their own game. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of whether it was directed specifically at them, they can kind of decipher, well, I'll take that bit because that's relevant for me, but that part maybe isn't relevant for me. And then they can use that. Because um, speaking for myself, I'm always giving little tips on body shape, movement, how to link with other players, the certain intensity required, blah, blah, blah. But if you were to break down everything I said across however many weeks we're into the season now, 
each player would have so much feedback, it would be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, so don't wait for your coach just to come across and speak to you individually or to send out an evaluation to think that you are getting pointers all the time for how you can improve it and do better. I have kind of an example from my playing days. Um, when I was playing in Italy for a little bit, I was playing in the right right back role. I love how you just put that in. What? When I was playing in Italy. Yeah, I was playing in Italy. It was on vacation. Yeah, it was a, a five-month-long vacation. Um, I was playing right back, and the coach that I had at the time, um, he wanted me to play one touch ball up the line so we could we could advance and I could play it to that right back or uh, right winger. And I was having such a difficult time doing that. And there were balls were going out of bounds, they were going straight to um straight to an attacker. And you know, I'm asking the questions like, oh, what should I be doing? And I realized I wasn't looking before I was playing that pass. I was watching the ball coming across and Right when right when I would pass the ball, I would look up and the ball would be out of bounds at that time. So he said, oh, well, how about you take a look before the ball comes over to you? Take a look up that line and see if one, if it's feasible and two, you know, if, if you can actually hit that. And once I started taking that look, once I took that advice, I, you know, I started connecting more passes up that up that right right side. And if it wasn't on, I would look oh, I can't play. So I'd try to find a center mid in the middle or I'd play back to the center back. And if I hadn't asked those questions, if I hadn't realized some of the mistakes that I made, if I hadn't taken his advice, I may have figured it out, but it would have been, you know, it would come at my cost. It would have, it would have, you know, taken me a little bit longer and I, I would have gotten so frustrated and I wouldn't upholding the standard that the coach and, and the team wanted me to. So, I mean, just a little example there, nothing crazy, but, you know, even playing at a decently high level, those mistakes and still being coachable has that impact. It's, it's a great tool that every athlete and player can use to improve. And do you know what the coach said to the players on the bench? Let them get the ball through. No, no, no. He was going to say, look, that is an example of someone that's yeah. coachable. Yeah, that's yeah. why he's playing and you guys are on the bench. Maybe. Well, I, I was, a sub. I was a sub in that case. Oh, he was. So he was a, <laughs> but he said it in Italian as well, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. but no, it, it's exactly everything there, you know, that's, and I think that's the point we wanted to get across today, right? That um, players it, want, need to be coachable. Yeah. yeah. If players aren't coachable, there's nothing we can do. We could be the best coach in the world, but there's nothing we can do. You need to be open and learning. Yeah, you have to be. Um, and it's in all walks of life, right? Piano, we talked about the you know, example of piano lessons yeah. as well. And it's everybody, well, if you think about going to school, the, the teacher's going to help you, but ultimately you have to go and do the work. You know, if you don't do the work, it's a matter of what the teacher is. Mm -hmm. Instead of fail. Yeah. You know? Wise words. Yeah. That's so, why we need him on every week, you see. Uh, I, think, I think we have the, uh, the squad here. I think this is a pretty, pretty good conversation. Hannah pops in because she's, she's across the street over there. <laughs> and Leon comes in, you know, he, the, the glue we have, the oath in. <laughs> so, I mean, I thought that's it's it, we covered all points in that, you know, and if you have any questions at all as a coach, we want you to ask those questions and we want to hear your curiosities. We want to hear your frustrations because, you know, from that you will grow. And if you just bottle it up and keep it inside and make the same mistakes, then, you know, it, it help us help you essentially what it is. So the takeaways, because for, for the four people that do listen, the takeaways are. <laughs> we have more than that. We have more every week now. Yeah, there you go. Um, and they've all gone since you, they've, they've all started um, increasing since uh, I've been off of it. So uh, well done to you, Aaron. But no, the takeaways here really are because, you know, are uh, what can you be to be more coachable? We've gone, we've gone through that. Uh, if you're making the same mistake over and over again, recognize yourself that you're not doing something right. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is educate yourself, either do it yourself or utilize one of these, these coaches that, that you've got. Yeah. 
Uh, and we have we have a, a, a great tool now with the VO that we have basically every most of the game games on VO now that you can watch even even if it's not your team that you watch even if you watch 20 minutes of say a 2010 team so look at your position look at what the players in that position are doing how can you do it a little bit better and then ask questions you know the video the VOs are edited most of the time so that you have the feedback you have that that resource that you can use and i think this club is doing a great thing with the availability of our resources so that each coach each player each parent can learn a little bit more about this beautiful game as well as you know maybe you know you you, you watch a vo or you watch a master class that coach anthony did which we will have again um, but we have so many resources and, and, you know, the players that use these resources we find are usually the players that progress and excel. I do want to point out that on our website, we do have the core competencies, which is if we were okay. to do a test, if you were to do a test at school and someone was to give you the answers the day before the test, you'd take it, right? Yeah, of course. On our website, we have our core competency sheet, which is technical, tactical, physical, and psychological things that we're looking for at each age group. And field size. Yeah. Uh, and, and field size. So if, you know, because we always get the question, and I know we want to wrap up here, but the question is, what could so-and-so be doing better? Or, what, you know, or coach, what could I do better? Coach, what can I do to get more playing time? The answers are on the core competency sheet. Mm -hmm. Passes, inside of the foot passes, are they accurate? Have they got the correct weight? Um, are they on the floor? You yeah. know, if you want to control it, it's all there. Um, so, you know, maybe we need to do a better job. I know that when we did have, it was very prevalent before COVID uh, on our website. And then we found that other clubs were stealing it. Oh, so really? we kind of hid it a little bit. But there is a, you know, Tom, what do you, best way to do that? Maybe individual links to the teams and, and, and stuff like that without getting too carried away. Yeah, I think that's I think that's an option. We, we were talking earlier about Anthony and um, Aaron putting together something kind of a little bit more new, modern kind of our style of play and things like that. So maybe we can include it in there. But yeah, I think overall we might be able to share it with our, because our teams are private, right, on the website. So we can share yeah, it in there and won't be able to see it. So yeah, perfect. But um, good. Well, I, I thought this was a great podcast. We had a bunch of useful information in there, and we had some uh, some great guests on. Um, Tom, it's always wonderful seeing you via Zoom on Wednesday at 1.30. Uh, he was late today, actually. He I was, was late today. 47. I was, I was late today. Uh, that's my fault there, but we got it recorded. We got it all done. It was. Uh, I thought it was a great, great podcast, and the, the parents that do listen, as always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, we're always looking for feedback. I was actually talking to one of the parents this past weekend, and she was saying, oh, I was listening to this podcast when I was doing laundry. It's like, I didn't know any of the information regarding winter scheduling or the international trips, but I watched the, or listened to the podcast doing laundry, and I was like, I knew everything. She, and she was the, the information source for all the parents on the team then. So yeah, I, I think it's good one of those parents. I just looked at the numbers there, and we're a lot bigger than four. I, I think our biggest one's 185 listens. Now, 10 of them could be Leon, and I could be quite, I could have a few as well. But yeah, our goal has to be by the end of the fall, more than 200 listeners. It's doable. Uh, now that Hannah's on it, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 300. No, right pre away. no pressure. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, uh, Anthony Quinn. Thank you, Leon Othen. Thank you, Hannah Lasky. Am I saying Lasky? Um, thank you, Tom Robinson. Um, and I am Aaron Mazzola. Thank you for listening. Hopefully, we'll see everybody this week and this upcoming weekend. But we'll be back at you next week for another interview podcast. Thank you for listening. Bye. Thanks for listening to the interview podcast. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, find us on Facebook and Instagram, and check out our website, www.intercetfc.com.